I literally have not vlogged at all today and it is six o'clock and I need to be getting in the shower because Alex is on his way home and I need to trim my beard and do all kinds of things. We're getting ready to um, go out to dinner for Valentine's Day. And I've like been busting my butt all day today. Um, and it's crazy and I've been trying to just like get all this stuff done and um, so yeah, I'm like right now putting my vlog together from yesterday and um, all that kind of stuff. So, did you guys have a wonderful th uh, Thanksgiving? Did you guys have a wonderful Valentine's Day? Was it full of everything that you wanted? Did you get uh, all kinds of flowers and things? There was just a knock on my door and I legit thought it was Alex bringing me flowers. And it was this guy from window service wanting to know if we wanted a free renewal on my windows. I was like, oh, <laughs> okay. So anyway, but um, yeah, I did all my laundry today. I look like shit. I got so much stuff accomplished today, but. So yeah, I'm gonna um, get dressed and try to look a little bit nicer and take a shower and then I will vlog so you guys can actually see what Peter looks a little bit nicer. I might even trim my beard if I can get time to trim it, so. Look what Alex brought me for Valentine's Day. And my favorite, stargazer lilies and a plant, not just flower. <gasps> Pee, Pee what is that? <gasps> what is that? Thank you, honey. You're welcome. Oh my God, I love it so much. Okay, I have to go get ready now, bye. So we just got home from dinner and I thought it would be nice to maybe be private and personal and not vlog all of that tonight. But look at my wonderful balloons and my flowers. Mmm, they smell so good. I love them so much. And now we're just going to, you know, all that Valentine's Day stuff. Let me just tell you what I can't stand, okay? It's somebody that has no sense of humor. Not my husband. Not him at all. So we had a wonderful Valentine's Day, and then I lay down and I took a little bit of a nap. I was so exhausted. I've just been going, like every day, I have been going and going and going and going and going. And you guys, like, don't see a lot of it because I get the feeling like you guys get really sick of seeing me just, like, in my car running errands. Would you guys really like to see that? I'll just show you a whole day of me running errands. I feel like that's my life anyway. But this guy over here was at the Red Box, right? And then I see him get, or he's at his red, he's at the red box and he's probably like 50 and he's standing there in sock feet and I see him come in to get, he's like looking at candy and stuff, you know? So when he came up behind me, you guys have you figured out by now, I probably don't know a stranger. I said, um, and I'm real friendly with the cashier there. You know him, the one that's always talking to me about all the kinds of stuff, like, well, I just bought me a car, I'm gonna put mama's license plate on it, and all that kind of stuff. He's well, he's a nice guy. But anyway, my friend Lori has been bugging me about maybe coming to the casino. I was actually just gonna listen to my audiobook, so I don't even know that I'm gonna go to the casino. But, so I was talking to the guy at the counter, and he was showing me this coin that he got, some gold coin, 2017 Buffalo gold coin or something, I don't know, probably something he bought on late night television, who cared, not me. But anyway, so, um, the guy walks up behind me and I turn around and look at his socks and I said, uh, sir, I said, no shoes, no service. And he goes, oh really? I go, I'm totally joking. I go, but do you remember that from back in the day? He goes, no. <laughs> no shirts, no shoes, no service. Don't you remember that from back in the day? I can't stand somebody with no sense of humor. <laughs> People are so serious drives me nuts. I take everything so serious. <laughs> Get over it. Life's just not that serious. Uh. By the way, so many people guessed who I was talking about yesterday in the comment sections, and I didn't... <laughs> it was kind of funny to me. I was like, I hadn't actually thought of that, but maybe I should... Uh... <laughs> that wasn't really who I was talking about, but uh... <laughs> now that you say that, it makes me think. Anyway, um... It is interesting how we kind of like communicate with each other through my vlogs in the comment section, isn't it? I love it so much. 
I kind of seriously, like, low grade feel like I'm losing my mind. Like, I took out $20 earlier to go to the laundromat, but then I didn't end up using the $20 because I had enough coins. So I didn't use it. And now I'm like, where's the $20? And I wore these pajama pants, and I think my $20 is in the pajama pants. So I'm like, do I really want to go home and get the $20? I don't know. What time is it? Let's see. Oh, I have time. So anyway, I'm like right by the house. Anyway, yeah. But I'm like, what happened to that? And then, like, I was going through here, and I have all, like, I was finding, like, these gift cards for stuff that I haven't used. And, like, one of them was this half price. Okay, so the dog thing, did you guys watch the vlog where we went to, like, the dog fundraiser? Well, you could buy these mystery bags for $25, right? And then, like, you, um, depending on which bag you got, like, you could get, like, a necklace valued at $150 or you could get like a $100 gift card for Visa or you could get like a or you could just break even but like everybody got at least what they spent so like you might get like a $25 gift card to Starbucks right well this is so interesting isn't it I got a $50 gift card for half price books and I was so excited about it because it was like double my money right so I went to half price books on Sunday after we left that thing and Alex went home and I went and just like spent my whole $50 <laughs> at half price books. But I had fun, right? But I had like $7 on there and I wanted to go back to the other half price books because I read The Outsiders by Essie Hinton last summer and I still have never seen the movie, okay? Like, can you believe that? I'm 44 years old and I've never seen The Outsiders. Pony boy! So anyway, um... <laughs> But they had it at one and not the other, and it was like $5. And I was like, oh, perfect. I have $7 left on my gift card, so I can go back and I can buy the Outsiders, right? Well, and I was looking in there. I never did go back that day. I was too tired. Do you guys ever do that? Like, you have this big plan of what you're going to do, and then on the halfway there, you get really tired, and then you're like, I think I'll take a nap. <laughs> I Like, my life is just totally dictated by my naps. So anyway, um, what was I going to say? It doesn't really matter. Somebody asked me the other day, they said, um, in my videos, they said, when you come in, does Alex, like, wake up and all this kind of stuff? <clears throat> because it's really early for him. I've kind of taught the dogs a trick at this point, but here's the deal. If Alex has to get up really, really early, we don't, the dogs don't sleep with us. Well, Pee Pee always sleeps with us, but Moo and Tucker go sleep in their house. Um, and if they're sleeping in their house, they never wake up. Like, they don't bark down there. So, I just decided that I'm not going home to wake him up for $20 or so, because I do have to go into the bedroom then, and the dogs are in there, and then that will wake them up. So anyway, <coughs> bless me. Bless me, cause I'm tight. So anyway, I had a great Valentine's Day. My husband was very romantic. We had a very romantical Valentine's Day. Um, and we had fun, and so I didn't want to talk about it before, but I'll talk about it now. Like our very first date, um, <coughs> I kind of planned at the last minute, and we went to Bravo. And it was just, like, fun, and it was totally random. And I remember, like, I did not think the, the date was going to last. I didn't think it, the relationship was going to go anywhere. I just didn't expect it to at all, right? And so I went into the date totally not caring if it lasted or if it went well or whatever happened, right? And we ended up having the most amazing date, like, I've literally ever had in my entire life. It was so easy, and we just sat there and talked, and neither one of us finished our meals. <laughs> Which is probably the only time that's ever happened. Well, that's not true. Alex took his home tonight. But anyway, so we um, decided to kind of recreate our first date. And so we went back there tonight. And what's so funny is that Alex's brother, Fufu, Juan, works there now. And so Alex was like, you might want to make sure that we can get reservations. And so I called and I made reservations like two weeks ago. And the guy was like, 
oh, it'll be no problem getting in or whatever. And I was like, are you not taking reservations? He's like, we are, but it won't be a problem getting in. Okay, let me just tell you that when we showed up there, there were probably 30 couples ahead of us. <laughs> so anyway, thank God we had reservations. So, and I had requested Fufu as our waiter and it was really fun. Like he stood there and he talked to us a lot and he didn't really have a lot of other tables because by the time like halfway through our dinner, he was like kind of between a shift or something. So like new people were coming, but like he wasn't as busy. So we got to talk to him for a long time, but and his girlfriend Jesse is coming down this weekend and they're going to do Valentine's Day this weekend and all this kind of stuff. So anyway, we sat there and Alex drank a couple glasses of wine and I had some coffee. Well, he had two glasses of wine. And, um, but it was fun. One of our favorite things to do in like Miami is like go somewhere and like, you know, he'll have like a drink or something. Like I love, 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 love the bar Mangoes in Florida. And so we'll go and we'll sit outside. If you guys have not been to like Mangoes, it's like this like Latino salsa uh, bar slash restaurant in um, Miami on Ocean Drive. And they always have dancers and the music's really loud. And on the weekends, there's a line that goes all the way around the corner and I love it. And so we usually sit outside though and like I'll drink little espressos. And there's something that he calls it, I can't remember. It's not an espresso, but it's something else, like in a Venezuelan kind of coffee. And, um, or it's probably just like a, you know, South American coffee, but. And then he'll drink like a margarita or something like that. And we always have so much fun. And um, somebody asked me, they said, how do you deal with, I'm trying to kind of like do a little bit of a little Q and A tonight. People were like, how do you deal with Alex's drinking? Or you've mentioned that Alex drinks, does it bother you? Okay, so um, when Alex and I got together, and you know, like if this isn't your first time to the rodeo of Peter Mon, then you're finding out a lot of new things today. If it's not, then you kind of know my story a little bit. So I got sober when I was 22. I've been sober, I'm 44, so I've been sober 22 years. I'm very active in a 12-step program. So my sobriety and not drinking and things like that is very important to me. That being said, I also um, respect people who are non-alcoholic, if that makes sense, um, and that can drink and all that. When I met Alex, I was 36 and he was 24. He was right out of coming from IU, Indiana University in Bloomington, of where he was a huge partier. And so it kind of translated into our life together a little bit. And we were going out like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday nights. And it was a lot. And the drinking was a lot. And he didn't have as many responsibilities as he has now. Like, I, it was so funny because we were kind of talking about it today. He was like... I can remember there was a time that I thought it, he goes, I remember there was a time that I thought it was so lame when I would see people out like having a glass of wine and he was like, and now that's like totally who I am, right? Yeah, he was never like, like they were like, they would pre-game pre and day drink and all that stuff. Every once in a while, he'll say the word day drink to me and I'm like, you, you don't day drink when you're 32. But, um... So, like, his drinking is not, does not look today like what it looked like then. I can promise you if it did, I wouldn't be here with him. Um, it just was a lot. It was a lot of partying. It was a life that I wasn't expe used to. My ex and I, he didn't drink at all. But he started the day that we broke up. Um, and so I just wasn't used to it. You know, it had been like... My first boyfriend when I was sober, who actually lives in Southern Florida, or South Florida now, um, and is a DJ, he did drink right after I got sober, but I met him at like 10 months sober. Um, and, and he wasn't my first boyfriend boyfriend, but he was like my first serious boyfriend sober. And he would drink and he would go out and drink. And for some reason it didn't bother me. I don't know you guys, like there's a saying that says the desire was lifted from me and I, I feel like that. Like I'm not gonna say like I never think like a beer would be nice, but like the desire has been lifted from me. And the reality is that like, like Alex and I were talking tonight cause I looked at the bill. And he paid, like, because we always, like, if he pays for alcohol, I don't pay for it. And so he, like, I don't pay for that part of the bill. And so, like, one glass of wine that he got was, like, it was, like, six ounces and nine ounces. I don't even know what this means, okay? So he was, like, the six-ounce glass of wine was, like, nine-something, and the nine-ounce glass of wine was, like, thirteen seventy-five. And I said, does it bother you that you're paying as much, mo as much money for a glass of wine 
guys, you could pay for like a good bottle of wine, and I don't even know what a good bottle of wine costs today, but I mean, like I'm not talking like, you know, a $100 bottle of wine or $200 bottle of wine. I'm talking about like a $20 grocery store bottle of wine, okay? <laughs> because that's about as good as it got for me. So anyway, and I said, does it bother you? And he goes, no, because I'm drinking for the experience of sitting in a restaurant with my husband enjoying a glass of wine. I'm not drinking to get drunk. I go, yeah, that doesn't make any sense to me. He goes, what doesn't make any sense to you about that? And I go, that doesn't make any sense to me. Like, I don't understand why you would just, like, pay, like, $23 for two glasses of wine. It's such a waste. Why would you not just drink Diet Coke? He goes, I don't understand. <laughs> so, like, that's where, like, the difficulty comes in and, like, me trying to explain to him. I don't understand the point in having two glasses of wine. I mean, if I'm going to have a glass of wine, you better best... That you better bet your ass I'm going to be having lots of glasses of wine, okay? Because the purpose for me to drink wine is to get wasted. And I don't even have to like the taste of it, although that helps, right? But that's not why he drinks. And so, he doesn't, like, drink the way that he used to. I'm not going to act like he doesn't ever get buzzed or... Um, I can't think of really... Honestly, I was thinking about this tonight. I was thinking about the last... Okay, the last time that I think he got, like, full-on drunk wasted... Like, where it really bothered me was the snake pit at the Indy 500 two years ago. And he actually asked me tonight, he was like, do you want to go to the snake pit this year? Because he always gets tickets for it, for media coverage for our website. And it's like, Marshmallow's coming, and I can't, uh, Zed is coming, and he knows I love these DJs. But he and his brother typically go. And last year, they really didn't get that drunk, which, like, the Indy 500, the race, like, that's why people go anyway. Like, if you go to the race and you don't drink, like, I mean, people, like, there's a couple places I've learned that as an alcoholic in sobriety, you just don't go. One of them is tailgating at an IU football game, and the other one is the snake pit at the, the, snake pit at the Indy 500 Speedway. Um, I mean, it is absolute drunkenness. I mean, total drunkenness. So I was like, no, I don't think so. And then I was like thinking back about when he went like two years ago and these friends of ours dropped he and his brother off and they literally could hardly walk in the door. And But it ended up being kind of funny because they like passed out and then like I went and bought like pizza rolls and Totino's pizzas and stuff. And then when they got up, I was like, <laughs> forever the den mother. I was like, okay, what are we going to do? And they were like going to go out to some like after like 500 party. I go, oh, no, 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 no. You guys need to stay in. And they're like, yeah, you're probably right. I was like, it's crazy. You guys still have alcohol in your system. Like now that is where I can be kind of a threat about things. Like, like Alex is like. Um, Uber Central, although he just decided that he was no longer ever going to take Uber again, and now he's taking Lyft. Um, so, um, but, like, he, like, doesn't drive anywhere if he's been drinking. I have huge issues with that. Huge issues with that. Um, even if you just had a glass of wine and you get behind the wheel of a car, I have kind of an issue with that. So, um, yeah. I just think it's irresponsible. And I've done it. Listen, I have drank and drove many, many, many times. I am nobody to throw stones. But when you know better, you do better. And it's my responsibility to educate people that even if you get behind the wheel of a car having taken a hit or two off a joint or a bull or a oney or a dab or whatever or taken a pill or you have one glass of wine or one beer, your mind is altered and it is going to affect your driving. If you think that it's not, you're crazy. The majority of fatal car accidents that occur from marijuana, alcohol, pills, whatever happens, you know, within a five mile radius of their house and it typically happens when they haven't used a lot, okay? And um, I know this because I'm an expert <laughs> in addictions. That's what we used to say at the old treatment center I worked at. No, but I know that as a fact, right? And um, so it's scary and um, yeah. So 
like him sitting there tonight having a glass of wine at dinner doesn't really bother me. Now, we do have kind of a rule that, um, like, people ask a lot if I smoke cigarettes. So, like, if I go to the casino and I decide to smoke that night, or if we go out to a club and I smoke a couple cigarettes or whatever, like, the rule is that I brush my teeth because Alex absolutely cannot stand cigarette smoke whatsoever. And then, like, every time he drinks, he has to brush his teeth before he gets into bed because I don't want to be kissing something, you know, somebody that's been drinking. Like, that's not fun for me. But it's really kind of hard to get that taste out of there anyway. But, like, kissing, like, he... I don't know how to explain it. Like, I think maybe if he, like, drank some... It, it's weird because, like... So he drinks typically red wine or, like, he'll, if he drinks, like, hard liquor, which he rarely ever does, he'll drink, like, vodka water and, like, three limes. So it really just tastes like a lime. Um, what bothers me is, this is going to sound so crazy, and I've actually said this on my vlog before, is when he drinks white wine. And it's really not him. It's more like women, like family members of mine, when they drink white wine and they have perfume on, it reminds me of my mom putting me to bed when I was a little kid, like when she would get drunk. And um, I don't like it at all. It makes me very, very uncomfortable. Like, I, like instantly, I just like, you can see me, I just clam up. I don't like it. And um, so, but like his smell doesn't remind me of that. I don't know if that makes sense at all. I think it's interesting how smells remind us of certain things. So his drinking doesn't, like, today, the progression of the where it's at today compared to where it was is, like, nothing, you know? Like, I mean, it was bad. Like, our first six months together, I'll never forget. Like, it was, like, probably early spring after we had started dating that August. And I said to him, I said, listen, I can't do this. Like, I can't do it. Like, you know, I can't. It's just been too much. And um, he was like, well, what do I need to change? And I was like, the drinking has to change. I can't do this. Like, I can't continue. Like, and it wasn't even so much the drinking or any of the behaviors that went through it. It was just, like, being around that much drunkenness till 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. I just didn't enjoy it. So, anyway, now it's, like... I wanted to go on you now tomorrow, and I was like, are you and uh, your friend going out to eat? He has this girlfriend that he uh, goes out to dinner with on Wednesday nights, and they'll, like, go to, like, Ruth Chris Steakhouse, and they'll have, like, a glass of wine and, like, a steak, and that's, like, a night out for him. <laughs> that makes me kind of sad, actually. I feel like I took his youth away a little bit from him. Oh, well, he can get over it. So, that's kind of where I'm at. I don't know, I was actually talking to a friend tonight that's like 23, and he is in sobriety as well, and he really wants a girlfriend, and he was like asking me some things. I was like, don't date in the program. And he was like, what do you mean? And I said, it's just really, I, I've seen it be really hard when you date somebody else that's also sober. Like, I, I've seen it really work really, really well before, but for me, I knew I did not want to date somebody else that was sober. I didn't want to, like, be, like, looking at that person being like, have you gone to a meeting? Did you do this? Did you do that? Like, oh, I think you need to look at this behavior. Like, it's so much easier, you know? Like, I'm not saying it doesn't have its difficulties, too, but... The really difficult thing is Alex not understanding. Like, when we first got together, he didn't understand really how bad my drinking was because he wasn't even there for it, you know? And I reached out to like 20 people that I had been friends with back in the day that knew how bad my drinking really, really was. And I wrote them on like email and Facebook and stuff. And I said, could you write me back just so I could have Alex read it? And like every single person, I was kind of like a little, a little offended, honestly. Every single person was like, oh yeah, Peter was like one of the worst alcoholics I've ever met in my entire life. Like, and they, this behavior and that behavior and they, he did this one time. And I thought, okay, well, well no, wait a second. <laughs> like I asked you if I had a problem, but not all that, right? And then what was really interesting was we ran into my friend Heather and I said this not too long ago and she was like, I mean, she and I, we had our days back in the day, but that girl really helped me get sober, picked me up from treatment, took care of me the first couple days. I mean, she was just amazing to me and um, love her so much. So anyway, just such a heartstone of my life. And um, we ran into her at Cheesecake Factory not too long ago. And I was talking about it and whatever. And Alex said something like, oh, did you know? And she calls me Pete because my dad and my stepmom call me Pete. And she said, um, 
and Alex said, oh, so you knew Pete back, or Peter back in the day when he was like a drink, she's like, oh yeah, and I was like, oh God, yeah, I can't drink anymore, she, and she looked at me, and she looked at Alex, and she's like, oh no, he can never drink again, like she was so, like, I mean, I had not seen this girl in 15 years, and it was like, she had just picked me up from treatment yesterday, she was like, oh no, Peter can never drink again, like, it was like, she knew it was that life or death for me, so, anyway, it has been a wonderful day, and I think I will bid you good night. And I had such a romantic Valentine's Day with my husband. It was so fun. He really surprised me at the balloons and the flowers. So, ah, oh, I love you guys. I hope you had a wonderful day. If not, spring fling <laughs> coming your way. Make the most of your life. We're on borrowed time as it is. Good night.